think they've looked uh, a lot better. I, at their first event, when he was in game leading, they was a little bit shaky. You could tell he wasn't used to it. Mm. Uh, and as they practiced with him at the North American qualifiers, I thought they looked much more coordinated in the mid game. I thought they had much more conviction in where they went as a team uh, in mid round situations. So I, I think that's working out really well for them early on. I definitely had a feeling that. Uh the CT side were so, so much uh, more well-oiled when they were playing now with Cutler. Terry's side, I think, need a little bit of work, but that is that can be like the hardest side. It yeah. feels like getting the CT side to work can sometimes be uh, a little bit easier, especially maybe on a map like Inferno. Well, I guess we'll see on Dust 2, though, which is where NIP are going to be playing. Um, if you had to call... Just watching from the fall back. It hasn't happened, so they're just sticking out long. They've won that battle. They broke up the crossfire. And the response from NIP is to push onto Catwalk, get a little bit more centralized over towards A. They can watch the cross. They can play a little bit of a retake. Freiburg does has a, have a kit, but he's alone. So if he falls at CT spawn during this retake, they will not have the kit available. Yeah, they definitely, and that's really, really important to point out. You've got to take care and notice guys at home when that kit goes down because if it's in the wrong place it could be a big pr tr problem there's a nice shot from exist finesse already being low no bomb plant then about 40 seconds here and nip have equalized the odds bomb gonna go down in a plot for long and you can see they're controlling long actually clg they're playing a really long con here already going down is forest and Freiburg to fall exist with a great headshot it's now a double kill but he's in a 1v2 and they've already spotted them out cutler coming up from short they've got him boxed in this is a perfect situation for clg very tough for exist just to make it out right now, and he's going to tab that bomb once and then wait for Long standing up, but Cutler will take him out. That was very nicely played. Yeah, it really was. Very patient from CLG as well. They didn't overcommit to any fights. They just forced him back, made sure they got that bomb planted. You can see it too, once that, one that once it went into that one on two, it just had to jump out of the bomb site, had to drop down to pick up that kit for any chance whatsoever. But very well played by CLG early on to break up that stack at Long and then move from there. Well, they saw it coming very early as well. Even just as the bomb was going down, even though NIP were already fighting there, they actually went for the rotation out on long. So got to give it to CLG for, uh, for really believing that they could get the bomb plant through. Now, this time, they're putting in a lot of speed. And Moses, this is a discussion we keep having. Should you go fast or short in a, in a, in a round like this where you know you're going to be playing scouts and pistols, basically? That's, that's a scary part. A lot of teams, especially in North America, are choosing to just take it very fast. But there's a nice shot from Freiburg on the cross. Drops one. Haze is very low. There's no armor investment from NIP. They just have the upgraded pistols on that scout. But they have Haze low. They could do a little bit more damage in this round. Yeah, they could. That scout and the deagle on Freiburg, you really never know. CLG seem to have slowed it down a little bit. They do not have another smoke for the cross either. So once that one uh, wears out, there's a shot from Exist and with an assist from Allah to take down Hayes. So things are looking pretty good right now for NIP. They've done the damage and we're back in a 3v3 with the bomb going down, same position. Yeah, this has got to be a little bit nerve wracking for CLG, not wanting to lose a couple more, but here comes Nip up catwalk. CLG members just trying to hold off at the bomb site, play it passively, not lose too many more weapons. That jumping scout, that put some danger in a color who's just playing at the ramp. And Cutler trying to see if he can sneak up. Dust spot two NIP members and a good shot there. Follow up. AK actually sees it coming. And Finesse is going to be there. Shouldn't be a chance for Exist here. No armor means he's definitely going to go down. JDM with a good headshot. Long range. And CLG will manage to get back into it. And there was a bit of that mid-round stuff that you were talking about. They're going aggressive early. They can control along. But they take a lot of damage. And they seem to slow it down. And um, it worked out for them. Do you think that's generally a good call to, to play it slow after the initial engagement? Yeah, I mean, you don't want, because you don't want to, like, run into that bomb site right into a, an over-rotation from the defense. So if they if they had gone so quickly, it might have been four players on ramp, the other four players on ramp from Nip. So yeah. they played a little bit patiently, make sure that defense spreads out before they actually commit, and that's a nice nade stack. FNS down to 22 HP. 
Yeah, I think that was Existent Forest picking up one each. Minimal investment, $600. And they bring him down and actually ends up Forest with a kill as well. Mid-air headshot from Freiburg with the P250. And he's looking for a bit more. They've got to be careful. They need to double up. They're going one at a time. And Freiburg hits another headshot, taking down Tarek to 14 health. Very scary indeed. One more shot then, and that could have been a double kill and a very bad situation for CLG. And look at this boost up. Exist going to hit the shot over the smoke, and Tarek is down. JDM and Cutler are left. The bomb is not planted yet. And of course, it's going to be Get Right coming from behind. He does spot JDM, doesn't take the battle at that long range. But look at how boxed in CLG is. There's nowhere to go. The entire NIP team is over here. Four on two. They do smoke off the door. But the scout isn't going to be able to hold off two players. And there he goes. Forrest and Get Right managed to trade him off. It's just Cutler left on the side. He gets two. He knows the next two are in the B tunnels, but he tries to go for the plant. Gets dropped by Forrest. Not prepared for that. Wow, that is a huge turnaround. A round that CLG should have won even more than the second one. This time, no, well, no scout in play initially and um, no armor, just a double grenade, and they made all that work from it. Now you can see CLG back on, no armor currently, just a couple of grenades and pistols here. The problem was they didn't trade Freiburg off and be quick enough. They were so, they played that so slow after he got that first kill, it allowed all the rotations to come in for NIP. And now mid-aggression, exists, not able to land the shots, Forrest bails him out with two kills, he does eventually fall, but he's done the damage. Now Forrest can just play it safe. Yeah, so real power play in the beginning here. Get right also pushing out long, taking that fight and winning it against JDM. So it could double kill. All they've lost this exists so far. And I think maybe also a way of telling CLG that we're so fired up. Like for winning that round, we're, we're even willing to push the middle next round um, just to show how little we respect you and how much we're willing to, uh, to go in on winning this match. So I kind of like that from NIP. I feel like so much of their... The lack of results lately for this team has been down to just a complete lack of confidence. So I love seeing this early on from the team. It'll be it'd be interesting to know if they thought that that CLG was going to be be buying that round to do that push against you know against those pistols. Yeah. You don't want to necessarily push up and give away a gun. So I think they were trying to set the tone early on the first gun round. It just happened to be a save. So we'll have to see what kind of aggression they come up with this round. As JDM does pick up an AWP, but Alu and Force two of their own. So a double op set up here on the defense very early on. Yeah, which is a pretty big investment. Both those players are kind of low on money as a result, but we'll see if uh, it's going to pay off or not. They make the crossover in the middle, not going to try and fight JDM almost with the shot. I think he landed it right between the two players. Does see two out there, and it's very common. Uh, I think almost every team will know this by now for three for three NIP members to push that long, uh, especially when they have Molotovs. They'll throw the Molotov, they'll throw the double grenade, make absolutely sure no one's going to be there. So. Um, yeah, that should be some, some good information for CLG anyway, but sneaking into the middle, it's a good kill from Forrest onto Cutler from the scaffolding. And this looks like they wanted to have some kind of a mid-B split, clear out mid and then smoke it delayed. The bomb is still in upper B tunnels with FNS, who's all alone. Now Hazed is trying to give a little bit of attention on Catwalk. Going to smoke things off, maybe try and force a rotation, but Nip doesn't have to move. They have the man advantage, so they're just going to keep two players in that B site. Bit of a smoke for CT spawn, falling back in. Tarek's already cleared the middle, so they know that no one's in here watching. It's going to be Freiburg from B bomb site. He goes down. That's a great shot from JDM, which is going to leave Forrest inside the bomb site, jumping up into the window. No scope, not going to hit. He's being surrounded, and he goes down. And smooth execution right now for CLG, apart from the fact that the bomb is a bit far back, which is always a bit scary. But NIP have to wonder: Do they want to go for this retake or not? Yeah, they need, to, they need to grab a kill here early, but JDM's still doing damage, finds another pick. That was a very clever execution from CLG, throwing that, throwing the smoke down onto the ramp from Catwalk to kind of disguise the fact they wanted to do a mid-B smoke. And then JDM's just doing all the work from there. Three kills for him in this round. Once he took out Freiburg in that B bomb site, it was only forced with the AWP. It's so hard to hold off a mid-B split with just an op in that site. And CLG's eventually going to grind that round out. And like you said, big investment for that double op setup early on for Nip. That's going to do uh, a lot of damage to their money. They do pick up one more. That's going to be passed over to Alu. Yeah, but the result is also visible here. One from us, one Max 7. Um, one kit. And one kit. The Max 7 is great. You could play it in B, but also on short if you do the jumping Max 7, which is always hilarious. Finesse. Throw it off a flashbang there, but he already got double grenaded a couple of times. He doesn't want to risk it again. I love that last round from CLG. I don't even think Freiburg wanted to fight in that B-bomb side. I think he just wanted to spot. Mm -hmm. And even that was too much. Uh, too many pixels given away to JDM there. Yeah, one thing we, we haven't really mentioned too much is JDM as an opera is really starting to come into his own on the CLG squad. That smoke we just saw went down, and great job for, uh, for YNK to point that out for us there. That's one of the new smokes you can throw all the way over from CT spawn because of the hitbox or the skyboxes that have been removed. So that's actually a new feature of Dust 2, and it's great that you can do that now. It adds a lot more to the game, so I absolutely love that.
This looks like very similar. Put some pressure on Catwalk, force the defense back. The bomb is still all alone. This is going to be another mid-B split. Hayes gets the opening kill, but here's Forrest trying to defend. He gets traded off after getting two kills. Oh man, a two for one in the middle. Definitely a good job. Now Freiburg alone in this bomb site, and he has to stand tall. He needs to get this first kill at least. And there's Cutler gone down. Freiburg with the M4A4 going for it again. He's going to bait Terry Gout. He takes the shot. Freiburg. Swinging around the box here, 35 seconds left, he wins it again and has time to reload it, even spots Finesse and is going for the triple. Freiburg gonna get it as well with a headshot. One of the few people left in the professional scene to use that M4A4, but all 30 bullets came into uh, play there. Yeah, he comes up huge for his team, the only defender, and once again another situation where CLG bad job trading three on three, not, you know, trying to set up for a post plan already without clearing out the bomb site. Freiburg's able to take advantage of it. How much could they have guessed that Freiburg was going to be in that position? How many other good positions are there to, to hold if you're in a, in that kind of position where Freiburg was? It's hard coming through window like that, but I mean the thing is they had one player stayed in mid to watch for a run through through smoke. The, the player in B tunnels wasn't aggressive enough, so there was no one to trade that kill off. Right. So just a, a question of timing, maybe a little bit more, and CLG could have made it work. It's 3-3 right now. What's a good score for CLG? They are the underdogs here. That They're the ones that need to show us something big. How many rounds do they need on the terrorist side of uh, Dust2 here? As many as they can get. Is I, They want everything, so I, I think they need to at least get, get up towards 7 and 8. The, I mean, especially on the terror side. All right, so seven and eight, that's like the minimal buffer here that we're looking for. Less than that, it might be a really big problem. Of course, this round, no armor and just a couple of pistols here. Allo with a bit of a missed shot, uh, but it's not going to be an issue at all. Nobody going down for NIP, which... Uh, that's huge. Yeah, that's going to give them a bit of a foundation to work with, economically speaking. Mm -hmm. that, that's massive for, for all five to survive. Now you can see they have the kits, they have the Molotovs, they're going to be picking up the smokes. They're back to this double op setup, and they picked one up from the previous round. So that's basically a free AWP. And it looks like CLG... Not a full save. They are going to pick up some armor and, and some upgraded pistols. Also some utility to try and make a little bit more progress onto a bomb site to get the bomb down. Wow, double boost onto Catwalk. So um, I just I was pointing out how much NIP love going three long, but you can tell they're really trying to switch up the defense here and keep CLG guessing. We're going to have to see if Cutler is able to guess what's going on. But this time, it's another round with uh, a minimal investment for CLG. They're going to try and see if they can sneak out long, and Cutler gets the perfect timing on get right. And that's unusual. That's not easy to do. Yeah, no, you don't catch Cat right out like that too often. So there's a little bit of a freebie. They have the first kill, but they still have a lot of, a lot of work to go with. They haven't even salvaged that gun quite yet. They just picked it up on Hayes, but they know there's players out at long. And this is the long-range battle with the AWP. Alu wants to take this. It's going to miss that initial shot, though. Ooh, grenade lands right in between, but look at the damage. 91 to JDM. That's a huge grenade coming out. No armor means those grenades deal a tremendous amount of damage. That's one of the big benefits of having body armor is just uh, to to take some of the blow off there. Finesse waiting, and they, uh, this is a really good job. This is similar to what they were doing in the pistol round, leaving one guy back here. This could actually pay off really big with the Tech-9. He's making a little bit of noise, and he's lost two teammates, so it's a 4v3. Finesse coming up from behind as Tarek goes down. He's going to have to go big, but already turning around. Freiburg doing great damage, and now it's a 1v3. No chance at all. NIP just being a little bit too quick this time. Smart play by Alu as well, staying alive in that A site when the hit was coming. He misses that initial shot, throws out his grenade, and instead of staying to try and fight, he knows they can be creeping up close along that wall. He just drops down. You're talking about Get right and how you don't really catch him off guard, and it, there are only a couple of players in the scene, I would say, that have, because timing is such a hard skill to quantify, like how do you say someone has good timing? It's actually probably like a, a mixture of a bunch of other factors like experience and map knowledge and game knowledge and all that stuff, but Get right and snacks to my, in my opinion, are like, are like two. If I had to make like a top list, those would be at the top of my list probably. Yeah, exactly. Um, like timing gods essentially. And they pull out this boost again over on Calc to look into lower B. One's coming up close. They just turn away at the wrong moment. Hey, he's almost able to find something there, but now he knows he's got to clear this out. There's two players here. Playing behind this box. It's a nice nade and peek from Zist. Hayes isn't ready for it. No trade, so Nip still has complete control of Catwalk. Yeah, smoke goes off as well just to make sure that they get reversed and get right with a double, uh, almost a double. It was just a single one there, but Tarek could have easily gone down. He did run out of bullets. It's the M4A4 and not the M4A... Uh, oh, sorry, the M4A1. But there's Alu taking out Tarek. And it's going to be a return kill finally from Cutler here. There's still a chance, plenty of time, and in a 2v3, this could be done. Two ops as well uh, left on Nip at the moment. So if they're able to get into a bomb site, it could be difficult for, uh, for NIP players to, to take that bomb site back with these two sniper rifles. Forrest has actually just pulled out the Tech 9 completely. Yeah, close range like this in the middle. It'll be a lot of damage, but JDM is ready for it. In spite of the pop flash in from a teammate, it wasn't enough. And now Freiburg is going into upper dark. He doesn't want to get caught. 
in that bomb site, and he's going to be rotating in. He doesn't spot anyone here, which might be an indication. And look at Alu. He's reading this game really well. Doesn't hit the shot, but the information is very good anyway. They do not have an HQ grenade. Otherwise, probably one of these uh, CLG players would get grenaded just trying to put the bomb down. But instead, they're going to have to play for the afterplant here. JDM up on catwalk, and he's going to get that shot on Alu as well. It makes it a double. We're just going to leave it on Freiburg, walking up long. That's actually a huge opening kill. Freiburg catches one off guard. That's actually the Molotov as well. Cutler had one. He can't use it now for the bomb, so they had a bad read on where he was coming from. Now it's all up to JDM. Like you said, low HP, no nades for Freiburg, though. But the plant is great back here. Freiburg can't smoke it off either. He's crouching and he wants to see JDM, and he's going to get the shot as well. Great clutch from Freiburg. Gets a double and a huge blow to CLG. If they'd won that round, they would have got a foot back into the game, but now actually NIP are in a pretty good position. They have a couple of members at the end of that round at a plus 10,000. Yep. So a lot of money to spend, even though they lost four members in that round, they're going to be all right. Right. This is a good buy, though, out of CLG with the plant. They got they did get those four kills. That, that's something that's a, that's a small mistake that is just heartbreaking is not having any eyes on Long Cutler, just in too exposed of a position to see where uh, to really handle that kind of a flank from Freiburg. So well done from him. But the op of JDM almost pulled him right back into that round in that two on three. Yeah, very impressive. I mean, the rotation worked out well. If Freiburg had stayed in the B-bomb site, he wouldn't have been in long in time anyway. So, I mean, a, a good individual call from Freiburg as well, just deciding, I, I can't stay and wait in right. here. I, I need to move out. So, um, pretty good job on him as well. Alu in the middle gets tagged up a bit through those uh, metal doors. And uh, we're in the 10th round here. So, just uh, two-thirds of the way into the first half and Tarek going down first. Yeah, and there's so much utility left on the CLG squad. That's a, that's a pick that just doesn't need to be given away. Smoke those doors off. Flash them if you're going to try and cross and get up on Catwalk. Now they're splitting up. They're going to go try and take long delayed as they've been doing a lot this half. So get right still in the pit. He's going to be the one coming for it. But FNS, a nice shot on him. And now Exist is feeling very lonely in this bomb site. Oh, this is going to be tough. If you look the wrong way at the wrong time here, the Molotov follow-up. Now he's going to have to move, and they're out on long as well. He goes down. That Cutler almost takes him with him, but not going to be quite enough here. So a man advantage for CLG. Bomb's about to go down, but Forrest going to catch Cutler. Trying to hide in that corner, and now the reverse Molotov on the bomb plant. So JDM going to have to move out of there, and he does just creep in behind the box. Also, Hayes playing in CT spawn. NIP going to have to do this very well, and Forrest mid-air takes him down. JDM sprays, and it's a return. It's now a two for two. Finesse taking down Forrest and Freiburg. Very low, but the fire. JDM ends up dropping to Freiburg. And can he clutch it again? He's moving in now. He's got the AWP. What a rare sight. And Freiburg, he's going to hold it down. Finesse, is he going to dare it? Two, three, there it is. Great headshot and a great triple kill for Finesse. And CLG, they get a much needed round. Yeah, beautiful triple kill from FNS. Getting that entry over towards Long. Taking Get Right out immediately. And then it follows up. Cutler in the bomb site exists. And Get Right defending that site didn't get any kills. So the rotation does come in. It's just a little bit too little, too late. That could have been scary, and Finesse, it's also hard for him to know. There was plenty of time, so Freiburg could have faked it and tried to shoot him instead. Um, well, he, he played that smart, because he got close up on that long corner, you know, knowing and Freiburg picks up the op, thinking he's going to be farther away just to defend that at platform or in pit. So FNS tricks him out a little bit there. Well, look at this. Another good read coming out here from the American team. They actually see the boost coming, and they take down Get Right on Catwalk. Um, very, very good read. If you have that in the Noah Tower, as we sometimes refer to it, um, going very far back indeed. Yep. But um, if you have that tower, it's not unreasonable to also have someone going aggressive on catwalk because you can help each other out a bit. So really good read from CLG, although they're walking into a lot of damage. Freiburg will go down to Finesse in the middle and now swinging through Forest. A lot of members here and he's going to get just the one. Things are looking great right now for CLG. Yeah, they've played these early games in the last couple rounds very, very well. Now look at it. They're just picking NAP apart. They've gotten some opening kills, spreading out the defense and taking advantage of the gaps. And FNS is going to clean up Alu at the end. So this might finally allow CLG to take control of the game economically. This must have felt like a round for NIP where everything they did, it seemed like CLG already knew. Um, mm -hmm. Starting off middle grenade, that get made. right coming short, then the rotation towards B. They got caught off left and right, and NIP are going to be ecoing here. That's a team coordination out of CLG that we haven't really seen at all in the yeah. past. So uh, this is the thing with Cutler calling. These are the kind of plays that they're starting to make now, and it's looking very, very impressive. JDM going to get the shot out on long, not going to run into any grenades because NIP just do not have them. Alu baiting a little bit, and get right going to come up from the pit. Good shot there, tries to get another one. Would have actually been impressive. Um, I'm not sure who's the pistol choice, but uh, if he had got that first kill initially, immediately, probably could have turned into a double kill. But 
No worries here for CLG. They shouldn't be losing any more members. Freiburg trying to hide in the corner. Maybe Finesse going to go down, but he is doing a pretty good job checking everywhere, and he's going to get that kill on Freiburg as well. So score is tied here, Moses, at 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, this is uh, this is looking good for CLG. They had a little bit of a stumble, but uh, these delayed takes up catwalks, delayed takes out long have been very effective. And Nip is just getting caught. When they're losing those first players, everything from there, they're getting caught in, in very isolated positions, just one player at a time. And you can see here, Alu picks up the Mag-7, the shotgun, just so he can have a kit and he can have full utilities because there's no other kits on NIP. And there's very, very light nades moving forward. Yes, and let's just point that out as well. That's one of the reasons, I think, why Al Alu is such a fantastic player, just being so flexible. There's a good shot initially. Get right going down. Mad spray from Tarek. They're out on long. They're going to go for it. Sisters. Well, he goes down. Double kill here. And Tarek, one of the really heavy hitters on this team and such a talent. I feel like he's still very much in the making. Give him a couple of more years and, and you will see a terrifying force. Um, he has his ups and downs, but recently it seems like it's... It's been it's all getting ups more, lately. Yeah, it's all ups lately. Hey, here's the thing. Over a minute left and you're in a three on five. This defense is going to start getting spread out. You can already see it a little bit. Alu just playing... Uh, you know, over towards A, there's one player on catwalk, Freiburg over towards B, so they have no read now. They can't even make any kind of information plays to kind of figure out where CLG is going to go. Now Freiburg hears the flash. He's going to try and pop flash himself in, make some magic happen, try and salvage this round. Can't find anything initially. CLG's keeping him at bay, and there's the smoke at the doors. That should be it. Great job. Alu will take down Tarek. Oh, yours very low, and Freiburg is going to win that fight. Now Forrest coming up from behind. It's from a 5v3 into a 3v3. Forrest swinging around. He takes down JDM, sprays for another one, and it's Finesse gone down. Now Hazed alone in a 1v3 CLG. They're tossing it away, and Freiburg picks up another kill, and it's NIP back with a 7-6 lead here, and that should never have been their round. That's crushing if you're CLG. A 5-on-3 entering this B-bomb site, and NIP finds every kill they need to at the right moments. Just that kill, the spray through the smoke, from Freiburg, it takes the attention of JDM away from Tunnels. He's watching that flank for the whole time, and once that kill goes down, feels like he needs to go help him get the bomb down, and that's when Forrest makes his move. Absolutely devastating. JDM watching the cross in the middle, doesn't want to take any kind of uh, early shots. I was just about to commend CLG for not fighting Freiburg, but putting down the smokes and playing it safely, and they still lost control of that round. And these are the kind of rounds that, let's say realistically, if we want to see an IP in the finals here, these are the rounds that they used to be so well known for and, right. and that they need to pull out, not just against CLG, but against every team. Oh, and then you look at that from CLG's point of view. If this is a team that wants to take that next step to be a threat constantly in these tournaments, those are rounds you absolutely could yeah. not lose. I agree. Now, it's going to be Forrest up here with a position that Cloud9 have been favoring a lot recently. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways that they try and break that uh, mid B split push um, so, we'll see. It looks like they've got the right read. That position is super valuable uh, where Forrest is holding. It's going to be a mid-B split, but, I mean, little does NIP know, there's going to be four members in B tunnel, so they might not even split this. Hayes might just lurk in middle, but it's going to be mass as a mid-B split. So, I, Forrest is a great position, but he's not going to see anything. You're absolutely right, and that's crucial. We're going to see now Freiburg is going to have to really step it up. He's done it a couple of times already, and now it's his chance again. He sprays madly and only takes Finesse down to 34. He's going to have a chance here to reload, but he won't even take it. Cutler will take him out, and now Forrest wins the fight in the middle. But the B-bomb site is lost. Bomb being planted here. Forrest nearly getting the kill, but now it's a 4v4. They've got two Molotovs, one of them just being used. Another one, I think, about to be put up here. Forrest, very low on health. Going to have to see if he can fall back, but he actually runs through and takes that trick. Now it's a 3v3, and that bomb is ticking. Exist running three goes down. Tarek picks up a kill, and Tarek with another one. He makes it a triple. Alu very low on health. It's a 1v2, and he tries to push through with the AWB. He goes down to JDM and CLG. They're going to win that fight. Tarek with a triple. They hold the line in spite of everyone being tagged up. It looks so scary. They were getting spammed through every box. Forrest makes great play. Actually, that one kill, I thought that was going to break the round for CLG when he gets that kill on FNS into the bomb site because that's a crucial spot to holding that site. So once that clears out, the rest of your teammates can stream through that window, but instead it's just Tarek spraying them all down and a very broken buy for NIP on this last round. Three pistols, one shotgun, no kits whatsoever. And you said it, Moses, uh, seven or eight. That was the foundation that CLG need for when the second half rolls in. That's something that they need, these, these seven or eight rounds here. And it looks like they're getting there. Um, so pretty good job on their part here. Freiburg with a Deagle does a lot of damage, but he can't pick up the kill. And this time, there's really almost no way that they can throw it away. Now, eight rounds. I think I have a feeling CLG are going to be okay with it, but if you think about how they lost that 5v3, right. that's going to come back and hold them a bit. Absolutely. I think the big thing for CLG at the moment is that there was an emphasis in this defense NIP to have that double-op setup, and JDM 
has been out alp out opping both nip both nip snipers in this yeah. matchup so far. He's been very effective for his team. And so it's dust too, right? It's yep. the it's the OP map, so he's going to have a big impact doing that. Um, Look at Cutler quietly with 17 kills. Like Forrest is leading the server with 18, but... How does that work? He's doing the in-game leading and also top fragging, actually out fragging Tarek, who I feel like... I feel like some of Tarek's rounds have been really high impact, even though he, he's lower in the, on the scoreboard. He's still been um, having a high impact with Cutler, obviously playing his heart out right now. He does that. He that's that's just, that's just kind of his thing. He's going to get, you know, his 15 to 20 kills. I mean, he just does it consistently. I'm very impressed so far. The second half is going to be coming up as well, so I hope you guys are ready for it. Just about a minute left here, and it is the first game of the ESL1 Cologne Major. We're still uh, not at the Lancaster Arena. That's going to be the final two days, but um, yeah, it's the group stage, and it's our very first game. Moses, how do you feel? CLG, have they been playing um, uh, better or worse than you expected? better, to be honest with you. Although, as much as I've said that, recently they've looked much, much improved. It's just the question of, is that going to translate to European opponents? Because they've been playing in North America where the quality of, True. of the play is a little bit lower uh, top to bottom. So it's, they've looked good, but now it's translating against NIP, and we saw it translate a little bit at IEM, but still, I mean, they've yeah. got to close these matches out at some point. They cannot be that team that just you know, gets the rounds, and then we're like, good job, you got close. They, they've got to convert one of these into wins. Yeah, because if you get close a bunch of times, it, that will be fuel to keep you trying. You feel like we're so close all the time, just a little bit more and we're there. But if it never comes, then it turns into frustration instead. You feel like, okay, there's something wrong since we can't do it, and then, you know, it's time to make a change or, or people just start um, getting annoyed instead. Second half coming up here, what kind of pistol round do you see, want to see out of NIP here? It's terror side. Aggressive. Uh, I, I mean, do we see most of these teams right now in the professional scene playing very aggressive, more fast-paced pistol rounds? I'd like to see them not do a default. You know, yeah. you get get on your horse and make something happen. Be the aggressors. All right, so the default round will probably be trying to take control of mid, upper dark, and long. Make sure that CLG aren't pushing them anywhere, and then make up their minds. See how many people they can spot middle. That'd be the default play. See if NIP are going to go for it here. Two smokes. Um, I would say that's a, that could be an indication that there's going to be some sort of B split involved here. Yeah, especially with three players and the bomb going over towards the B site, but they've spotted. Freiburg has spotted on a couple. It's very aggressive. Look at the upper push from CLG. They're going to come in. They're going to come into these tunnels. No one from NIP is looking that way, but they turn around, they deal the damage, and they force them back. So that's nicely done from NIP early on. Yeah, and actually a, a really big save there because Cutler was also being super aggressive in the middle. So I think actually CLG are trying to knock NIP a bit off their balance here in the second half, but Forrest is already in that A bomb site, just checking it out. And now here comes the bomb carried by Alu, and Forrest has got control of everything. So it's going to be a full on retake here. One smoke, one kit on CLG. It'd be almost a miracle if they could retake this site. There's so many NIP members, but it starts great. Hazed, who's been almost absent for the first half, comes in second half. Get right here, looking behind. He takes one, almost a double kill. And there's going to be Tarek caught in CT spawn. Now it's a 3v4, and that bomb is ticking away. JDM moving up. He gets shot down by Alu. Jumping burst right. Gets a second one as well. And it's going to be FNS now over on long. No chance. Forrest picks it up. What a turnaround there. Alu, double jumping shot. Forrest takes that A-bomb site completely for free. A little bit of an over-rotation from CLG. But the real beauty of NIP that round is, is when Getright's lurking in middle, you talked about his timing, and he's got the information. He said there's a couple players coming into CT spawn. Forrest and Alu both jump down to help clear out that one avenue of attack. So what they want to do is just eliminate players rotating through CT spawn, and then as a team, they can concentrate on catwalk later on. And beautiful shots from Alu, but it comes down to Forrest taking that A-site, no resistance whatsoever. Really, really good job. Um, CLG relying on this round with no armor, well, except for Hazed. Um, no scout being picked up. What do you think about that? That is unusual by European standards. That, that to me just says they want JDM to have that AWP. They're just like, don't buy anything in these rounds whatsoever. Get that op out in the fourth round, because if you buy that scout this early, if you invest in armor and an upgraded pistol, you're not going to have an AWP in the fourth round. And I'm wondering if it's also a sign for CLG to say, look, even if we lose these couple of rounds here, if it goes 10-8, we'll come back. We can still win this. We, we're, we're that confident in our CT side that we'll give you these rounds potentially. They're going to lose the B-bomb site. It was a good setup, and I do want to give them credit for buying uh, two flashbangs, which they did. I think investing just a couple of hundred dollars, I say this over and over again, but I get really upset when teams don't buy any grenades in the in the eco rounds. That that always... Right. Uh, you never know what one pop flash can yeah. buy three players and you can just scram down, but either way... NIP handles that really, really well, very patiently as a team walking through those B tunnels. Forrest finds the kills to open it up. Exist taking out JDM. Grenade not going to be able to chase down Hayes there, but um, 
He's going to end up running away. He does have armor, so he actually has a reason to save it. Cutler has the flashbang as well. Again, I, it, it may sound ridiculous, but at this level, you know, one guy with the armor in 5-7 and maybe Cutler with a good pop flash, you, we've seen we've seen some uh, some some freaky rounds build on, on even less than that. Right, that'll that'll be nice going into the next round. And that'll, that'll be something where they position Hayes so that he can be the one. He's the one who takes contact for CLG first with that 5-7 and armor. We saw how they had to set up long last round. They were hiding on the corner along, and I think actually it was Cutler who was a little bit further back, ready to pop flash them in. NIP never showed up, but if they do this round, we'll see what can happen here. Well, here's the thing too, with Forrest at 20, like, 21 and 11, playing like a really good form that we haven't seen him in in some time, playing it so slow, he's just got those kills as soon as they show up on his screen, so it's hard to execute a setup like that if Forrest is just going to take someone's head off immediately. And this time, with the MAC-10 being very aggressive, jumps up on the box, spots one, on the platform, and that's Tarek, but there's the pop flash. Tarek can't take advantage of it quite yet, but it's FNS from the doors who does it. Really good job now. Get right over and Long gonna spot it out. He sees one player and he's already put up the smoke from uh, the window there. So now Cutler gonna pop flash his way and everyone is flashed, including Cutler, which is not the ideal situation. But he actually gets into Kai, hits a headshot while flashed. And now it's Tarek and Finesse left here. 2v3, more than a minute left. Tarek sprays down one with the stolen mag. 10 and now Finesse from behind. They're both there. He's gonna miss the first couple of shots and that's gonna end his chances. Exist with a triple. That's a lot of damage done by CLG. Gee, I feel like we say it here, Moses, and it pops up there, that one flashbang. Yep, and it was, it was flashbangs repeatedly, just everyone blind at long. I can't believe Cutler was able to make it to those cars like that. If he'd been, think if he'd been a little bit patient, because there's no chance they would have thought he would have made that. Yeah. Run, and he just waits. That would have been cool. But either way, <laughs> do the damage. 10-8 now for NIP. It's the first full buy round for CLG. Dadium does have that AWP peeking up middle, going for the duel against Alu, but neither member finding anything. Yeah, and you called it Moses earlier, saving straight for that AWP, not, not investing too much into the previous rounds. And you were saying in the first half, he's been out oping the NIP snipers, both Alu and Forest. So I can understand why they want to make that investment, but NIP very quick into the middle. They're in upper dark as well with the bomb. If they get one frag here, they're probably going to win the round almost immediately. Right, but they fall out of that mid control. They had complete control of it. They fall up to catwalk. They know they've got to push back any defense that might be up here at Bricks. And there's no one there, so this is just a very standard setup from CLG. Tarek setting up with a pop flash for the middle, and he's waiting for a Q, and this could be part of the Q here. Uh, a trigger-based position sometimes is what we're referring to as. Smoke going up is going to mean Tarek wants to take a peek in the middle, pop flash out, sprays through and very nearly catches Forrest. A significant amount of damage being put up, and then the follow-up Molotov means exist. He's actually going to run into CT spawn. No, he's going to go back out again and takes a lot of damage for it. NIP very soft already, but it's Freiburg to open it up, gets one, and that could have easily been a headshot. He's taken the fight here. CLG needs to think about what they want to do. They have control along, and that's a good position to retake from. Right, but Forrest isn't going to let him get away, so now this retake is very spread out. Really, there's just these two CLG members at long, but one player CT spawn, one player trying to flank up. Catwalk, are they actually going to go for this? FNS spots ahead. There's Alu with the kill, but FNS can't do anything, and it all collapses from there, and once again, they get into that A bomb site for, for nothing. I mean, JDM does get dropped by Freiburg, but no defense mounted by CLG inside the bombsite. Playing that for a retake and it doesn't work out, they just get punished. Great call from NIP. I thought for sure they were going to continue to execute into B, but as you said, they, they clear short and they don't even see anyone there. So they just thought, all right, well, let's just keep going in that case. You're going to give it to us, so we'll, we'll take it. And that's exactly what they did on Pistol Round. That's, that's a couple times now, very early on in the second half. So NIP being very confident entering into these bombsites. Well, it's going to be three flashbangs currently on CLG. We'll see if they can make something uh, good happen for themselves. They do need it. At 12-8, I would say it's definitely still winnable for CLG, but they, but then they also need to start stepping it up. they got to make this back to 12-12 uh, afterwards and see if they can make it work, unless they could just straight win this round, which is definitely not easy. No, not at all. They do have the pop flashes that you mentioned. Cutler has one. So does Hayes. There's the smoke at long. There's a flash for NIP on itself, and Hayes isn't using it quite yet. He gets caught an angle of the smoke. Get Right's been able to find. Here's Cutler. He's going to try next. Completely blinds uh, Get Right, but Freiburg bails him out. So five on three now. NIP not taking any damage so far. And shots from Exist down in the middle as well. Tarek low on health. JDM to follow, and no issue at all. In fact, JDM catching that uh, grenade with his feet, it seems. It's going to bring them to 12-8, which was predictable. So let's see. Now is the time. They're going to pick up an AWP on JDM. That's no surprise. 
Uh, what do you want to see from CLG? What needs to change? Is it just that A bomb side, or is there is, are there other weaknesses in the setup here for the CT side? Well, one thing they were doing in the first half that was was really really good was together they were playing early rounds very well, finding an early pick, and that's kind of what they need to get back to on CT. Find a way to have some coordinated aggression, find an early kill, give yourself a man advantage, and there's one. Freiburg commits to the fight, almost takes out Hayes, but JDM swings out first, and now he's just going to stay perched at these doors. They have a nice crossfire set up. There's Force. He can't connect either. So JDM with two kills, put him into a five on three, and they cannot afford to lose this round. Excellent stuff. It looks like that last one almost waited went through the wall as well, but it's a good return from Alu now in the middle. Terry going to go for the spray down. He really then gets three in with a headshot while Flash drops the bomb, and Alu takes him out. But both NIP members are very, very soft at the moment. It should be a cleanup here for CLG to get them back in the game. Cutler sneaking up from behind, then he's seconds away from spotting Alu, but Hayes will take it away. And I think that's actually important. They need to get Hayes back in this game because he feels like he's been out for a while, and JDM finds a third kill of the round for himself to make it 12-9. Great round here, especially from uh, JDM. Right, but uh, that's it's not over. There's so much money built up for NIP, especially with another bomb plant there. Three members over 10,000 uh, for NIP, so getting a reset here for CLG would be absolutely disastrous. Oh, and Tarek actually calling a timeout here. So I'm wondering if it's a tactical timeout. I think it is, and I actually like that call with how important this next round is. Actually, no, he does disconnect from the server, so maybe it's not tactical. But this this next round is just so crucial for CLG if they want to get back into it. Just to catch people up, you are allowed to take one tactical timeout per team per game. Um, I think it's like a, a minute or two max, so you can't obviously stay timed out forever. Um, can be very important, probably. I think underutilized by pro teams. Some teams are much worse at I think TSM is one of the worst teams at getting these timeouts in. They almost never do it. Um, they just kind of keep tilting until they, they fall. But um, some teams have, have actually become pretty good at using it. Well, the cool thing about the timeouts is we saw it at, uh, I think it's most events probably, but especially at the ESL Pro League finals that we had, every time a team took a timeout, they won the following round. So you can just yeah. see how effective they are. Well, I think we are headed back into the game now. It's um, just starting now on the 22nd round, and Freiburg immediately takes down JDM, a stunning headshot. Yeah, a crucial kill. That's JDM, so the op is out of play now for CLG. Five on four. Freiburg's been an animal just with his one or two impact frags around. He's been doing great so far in this half. Well, Cutler sneaking up here. The heavy hitter and also in-game leader for CLG has been doing so much, but it seems he has to do a little bit more. Flash through the smoke. It would have been great if he had run into one or two people there, but three, a bit too much. And it means Hayes is now alone on the bomb site. Molotov there, he's forced out. He actually gets a kill, gets a second one. Hayes going mad. That might bring them back in the round. Amazing double kill coming out here for Hayes. And now Tarek instantly shutting down Alu, who missed that shot. Exist is low on health. A little flashbang, get right coming out long, and it's going to be Tarek and Hayes destroying all of NIP. What a huge round. Hayes really pulling his weight in this one round. That is... That was pulling them back. They had lost that round, basically, at that point. Right. That I mean, that might make up. You mentioned it. He seemed like he had kind of... We hadn't really been saying his name a whole lot in this match. He was down very, very low. Hadn't made a presence. And there it is. No bigger round to do it in than that one. So they're not forced onto an eco. They don't reset the economy. JDM's got the AWP back in his hands. And once again, just setting up in very, very spread out. One player in CT spawn, two over towards long, two in the B bomb site for CLG. Hayes actually got four kills in the first half. That's how absent he was. In 15 rounds, he pulled in four kills. But that one round, he pulled them back from an almost uh, unwinnable situation. If he goes down in that bomb site, it's lost. They're playing a, they're playing a 5v2, essentially. So huge plays from him. And obviously, Terry going along, doing a really good job as well. And this is this is CLG thinking there's going to be a mid presence. They have a player boosted up in CT spawn, I believe, behind that box. That this is we saw NIP try and utilize this one. He might get some action, but they also have two players in B, so they, they think there's going to be some kind of a mid play. They want to shut that down once again. It's going to be pretty much a retake strategy over at a. JDM will go for a shot and fall back towards long. But look at this delayed execution from NIP. One player in pit at the moment. Hayes is going to have to come up big, otherwise JDM is going to get boxed in. He does get a headshot, flashes way out. JDM sneaks on him, but he's going to get down by Alu. Hayes looking for a bit more, but he's going to get caught by Forrest and NIP. 
They may bend a long way, but right now it doesn't feel like they're breaking. They're just fighting their way back into this round. The bomb gonna go down. It's a long plant, makes a lot of sense. They do have two people there. So even as Exist goes down, this is gonna be tricky. There's one chance, and that's the smoke on Cutler. Up in the bomb site on Goose. Freiburg goes down. Where's that smoke? It's already up. Cutler put it down. The Molotov not gonna do anything when the smoke is up. And now they're fighting their way back. CLG, they actually get the retake home. Tarek picking up a double kill. Moses, please tell me, how did they lose that round? One Freiburg over in Goose, he had to get one kill there. It's, that was still so perfect for NIP. He set up wonderfully with that planet long, two players at long still alive, but just winning all the duels are CLG members at the moment. Hayes coming alive, winning winning a battle early on. Tarek on these retakes has been so effective. I'm surprised I actually thought CLG was going to use that smoke in the bomb site to, to kind of sneak it a yeah. fuse through. Yeah, that was my thinking too. I, I didn't even notice until the end that it wasn't down there. Right. I couldn't see it from the camera angle, but... Um Huge round, obviously, for CLG, and that's gonna, that has to put a bit of a dent in NIP's confidence here. In the middle, JDM sneaking in, dropping Forest, and smoking it back up again so they can't chase him through either. Wow. I mean, we already have Cloud9 as a super strong right now. North American team, Hayes taking out Exist, but CLG, they've really been putting a lot of homework in for this tournament. You can tell already. Yeah, they're looking great, and just another another five-on-three situation for them. They haven't even taken any damage, so JDM and Hayes getting these first two kills. And NIP has been stopped here in middle behind his smoke. They have no map control whatsoever. All three members are here, and they don't even have control of it. They're going to have to work their way up catwalk. And this is something, look at Hayes, taking the aggressive, being very confident now. He's going to flank around. He knows they don't have the manpower to watch every flank. All he's got to worry about is get right lurking, and... That's a free kill for Hayes there, so now very, very dangerous. Alu trying to find one. Freiburg's going to trade off Hayes on the flank, but still so much work to do. 45 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, a bit of a shame that Hayes goes down, but oh my god, he's been playing well the second half. Tarek goes down. Alu as well going to get the kill on Cutler now. It's Finesse finally, and it's JDM saving it. I could see you uh, almost thought, face palming there. I Moses. thought they were going to bring it back at a two on five. I was waiting for it. I just Those kills just stream out, but CLG, they, they recover nicely in the end. And finally now, the first time that, that NIP has been forced into a save run, they've had so much money throughout this half. Now they're going to have the pistols. They do invest a lot into nades, a lot in armor. They have that basically a full money, almost a full money bonus going on. They try and do some damage, keep the money low, but CLG with an opportunity to take control of this match. Leg shot there from Alu, and the follow-up grenade, or onto Alu, follow-up grenade not going to take him out. His score is tied at 12-12 currently, and NIP trying to speed up onto Long, but CLG, they see it coming. They're still going to lose a couple of players, and that's a big problem now. Cutler going to get a kill, but he goes down, and this is a huge round for NIP. CLG not ready for the speed of NIP, and now Finesse and Terry going to have to try and retake grenade once, and a follow-up not going to do any damage at all. And they are kind of boxed in. Freiburg taking a lot of fire damage here, but he's got a Tech-9 ready, and it's going to go down immediately. Tarek picking up the kill. Exist playing from pit, and now he's alone. Maybe CLG will have done it once again. He has so much potential in this round, but Tarek doesn't even stop to shoot. Takes down Exist, and NIP, that seemed like a very winnable round for them. It absolutely was. Uh, Tarek and FNS bailing CLG out of a really tight spot. Losing that round on, on the save like that would have been heartbreaking again. Uh, but either way, they pull it back. I think I got to expect NIP in this round has got to go towards that A bomb site. They've had a lot of success hitting into that A site, whether it was early on in the pistol round uh, and even the fourth round. They got a couple free entries into the site, basically. That round on an eco, they have some success there as well. So I would look for them to manipulate A one more time. Well, we're going to see a one-round lead here for CLG. 13 to 12, NIP economically worse off right now than CLG. It's like CLG have a lot of money. They have a couple of players that are reasonably well off, but the rest not doing too much. So there's a good chance NIP could come back with a couple of rounds here and actually almost win the map just because of uh, CLG's economy. Well, that last round was the one where CLG had a great chance to build up some bank, keep some members alive. You know, you obliterate that attack, but NIP not only gets a plan off it, but they get those three kills. So it forces a lot of rebuys out of CLG. If they were able to stabilize this late in the game and buy out for the rest of these rounds, no matter what happened, that would have been great. But NIP with the damage. Bomb well, still all the way over in upper dark, but... This position from JDM that we're just spotting by the car is one that he hasn't had a great chance to use so far, but if they go for a short push, I actually expect a player like JDM to, to shut down at least one, but maybe sometimes even two or three, and that's enough to stop a push, and we'll see if JDM is going to have a chance. The bomb is in upper, though, and that's a big giveaway, Oko. CGL don't know it yet. CLG. Right, oh, and look at this presence. JDM doesn't spot him falling into CT spawn, but Freiburg can't land the spray from that range. And there's FNS from the Raptors, grabs one more. Exist does trade him off, now entering into B. Tarek's not looking, Alu takes him out. So they're into the B bomb site now with the plant coming down. 
Wow, that's a big round. It looked like it could have worked out. Allo going to get the bomb down. It's a 3v3. And NIP, they make it work. I mean, pushing through the smoke with an AWP, that is generally not a good idea. But Allo made it work anyway. And a huge impact kill there to make sure that they couldn't uh, hold the bomb site. Now Molotov going to go up in the window. Allo behind the box. And they're trying to make their way through. Another kill comes through from the Finnish sniper. And it's down to JDM. Last man standing. He drops by Get Right. A double kill. And it's going to be back to 13-13. NIP, they make it into the round. And now... It is getting very scary for CLG. Look at that money. Two people with lots, the rest just not enough. Yeah, it would not surprise me. They're going to force buy here, so they do drop a Famas. But that entry into the B bomb save by NIP, that's another three and five they just won. With these man deficits, they're being able to take into the sites and just win these win the retake situation. So CLG not able to win it out there. And now they're on a force buy on the 13-13 round. Oh, good patience by Alu. Doesn't even go for the jumping person. He cleans him up later, but he drops JDM. Gets caught by that from us, but in return, it's going to be a sister spray down Cutler. Great double kill here. It's the God Alu version we've got going on right now. He's got 20 kills currently. Tarek just spotting them out on long, and they're going to go for a boost up into the bomb site. Tarek here from us in hand, and not going to be able to win that fight against Forrest. Now it's finesse left in a 1v4 and sprayed down through the smoke. Freiburg with a headshot, and that's going to bring NIP. Very close to winning this game at 14-13, and the force-up means CLG... I Forced mean, to give up match point. They had to have to, right? I think if they were on the terrorist side, they might try and sneak it in with Tech Nines and armor. <laughs> Probably. Why wouldn't you? But either way, now their backs are against the wall, pretty much. No investment whatsoever. Not even... They have one nade. So you don't like seeing teams not buying anything out of the eco rounds, but CLG knows it's all going to come down to whatever they can buy in the next round will be their best chance to stay alive. Yeah, but actually, I, I think buying one H E grenade doesn't make any sense. I would always pick a flashbang over that, or even a smoke if I had to. Mm -hmm. But if you had to buy an H E grenade, then at least not one. Then yeah. go for like two or three. Or yeah, something. nade stack the, that yeah. long tunnel. And this is this is this is exactly what they did in their uh, anti ecos in the early in the early portions of this half. NIP was let Forrest lead the way into that B bomb site. See what his aim can yield you, and he's going to creep his way impatiently. Not going to get the shot mid air, but. Alu spots one, maybe even two up there. Forrest taking a bit of damage here, but he's got he's got his whole crew with him, and they're going to be knocking down that B bomb site. Cutler, the last man left, and nobody dying on that NIP side. So things are looking very good indeed. And you're right, match and map point here for the Swedish ninjas at 15-13. There's really no chance here for Cutler. Maybe a kill, that'd be great, but not going to happen. So now we're looking for overtime here for CLG. What do you think? What are the chances? Not, not likely, I don't think. I, I, the thing is, even when they've gotten advantage in some of these rounds, NIP is able to, you know, equalize. Like, it just happens so quick. And CLG, uh, you can't, they take too much economic damage. That forced some, some awkward buy situations where they had to force buy a few rounds ago. Uh, either way, one kit on the board for CLG and very light on utility. This is a huge disadvantage for them. Oh, absolutely. If it comes to retake, they really won't have a lot. They'll have used all their grenades by that point in time. No one got tagged in the middle, though, so a pretty good start. And NIP running a bit of a default setup here in the beginning, but now they're putting on a lot of speed. Forrest already out in the middle, but Finesse going to win that initial fight. Forrest gets a kill. Can he get the second one here? Spraying down. No, Terry going to drop him. And that's a very important kill here. CLG trying to stay alive. Terry goes down to get right. They lose the bomb site, but here's the big thing. Exist is still lurking over on Catwalk. So when they try for this retake, he might be there. He takes down JDM. And it's now a 2v3 NIP. Two kills away from closing out this first map. And we'll see if they're going to be able to. Sneaking up through the middle. Exist is here. He sprays long range. Takes down Cutler. And now he's going to drop to get right. Who gets a double kill. And that is game 29 kills for Forrest at the end. 16-13 in favor of NIP. And they defeat CLG on Dust 2 in the first game here in Cologne. I know it's, I know it's closer to the scoreline than the Nip would have liked. But... Talking with Natu, he's always said that part of the issue he thinks that Nip has had recently is this tough battle they've had with a lack of confidence. And just yes. winning these first winning this first match, you know, no matter how close it is, Forrest with 29 kills is great to see early on in this tournament. Now, if they can build on that and stay dangerous, that, that's the key. So they, they, I mean, they survive. See the G, we mentioned it a couple times. There are a few rounds that they really let slip out of their fingers that could have turned this completely different. They had that one devastating 5v3. They lost the third round on the first half of the game uh, where they should have had a quick 3-0. It turned into a 2-1 instead. Right. Uh, probably would have been overtime if they could have uh, if they could have gone back and changed that. But um, that's how it is. Not looking too excited. Though I will say I'm 
I'm pleased to see that uh, Tarek and Cutler were playing so well. Glad that Hayes made it back. That's actually something that's very difficult to do. If you have a first half like Hayes had, to come back and actually start playing well again is very difficult. Oh, well, the key is, is you know, even if you know you have a bad half and you're feeling bad about it, you have to stay focused enough where you can maybe not have a monster half, but find your way to impact a couple rounds here and there, yeah. have a positive impact. And he did that. He's, he bailed him out of a, of a round early on in that second half uh, to get their, their winning streak started. But JDM also with the AWP played very, very well. Absolutely. And also, uh, I think the kill differential on NIP was not that great. I mean, Forrest to 29, sure, but I think the lowest fragger was actually to get right at 17. So, I mean, 17 to 29, it's not that big. It means pretty much everyone on NIP was uh, was doing something good. And that's also very important, especially maybe early in a tournament like this. I, I think it's a good sign right now for, for NIP, even though uh, they probably would have uh, preferred a landslide. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely would have. But yeah, it's great for them. So they can go into that next match knowing, uh, having a little bit of extra confidence into them. Um, but CLG, I, the tough part is they are that team that we said. They can put up the numbers, but they can't seem to get over that hump to take the complete victory away. They, they've they teased us with a couple best-of-one upsets in the past, but they're, they're too few and far between. So uh, a couple, a couple uh, you know, corrections in some of their late-round situationals, especially when they have man advantages. They yeah. seem to throw away a couple kills and allow their opponents back into it. You fix that, and I think you start winning more matches. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to sort of tally up here, the recent results of CLG on LAN against big European teams, it was almost beating Envy on Inferno, it was almost beating TSM as well as at IEM, very similar scoreline, I think also 16-13, now almost NIP. So we've got a, a bunch of almost matches here for for a CLG, but I'm wondering if they are ready over at the panel. Indeed they are. So Chobra, take it away. Pasha. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and we are ready with one of the winners of the very first game here at the ESL1 Cologne Major. It is going to be Exist from NIP. Of course, congratulations are in order, but there's still a long way to go. How have you guys enjoyed that very first match between NIP and CLG? Uh, it, like I said, that's the, the result I was predicting. No one else really joined me on that one, but that, I know how strong uh, CLG can be, especially the individual performances. JDM was very impactful there. His all picks seemed to be very influential there and got them into a lot of key rounds there. So one thing to know as well for me was the, the CLG uh, retakes onto the bomb sites. They were phenomenal. Like with rounds, it looked like NRP had tied up. They somehow got together. The synergy from the CT side was great for them. And retaking it seemed like a, an important factor to getting so many rounds on the board. For Flair, and watching that game, I mean, do we have any questions for Exist? Because in the middle, I mean, as Casper saying, it looked like, I mean, CLG, if they just brushed up a couple of things, looked like they could have taken that. Yeah, but I mean, you have to keep in mind as well that uh, NIP also did a bunch of mistakes, not not only CLG. So you can't just base a, a game off of the mistakes that CLG did when you also have to account for NIP's mistakes that they had as well. They, they also had a few rounds when they lost one of the retakes that they shouldn't have. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it was a close game. But, you know, what we've always said is a win is a win. Doesn't matter the score. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, I mean, how do you feel about that game looking back exist uh, with a couple of the points that the guys have mentioned? Well, it's like Fifer said, we, we felt like we should have won a game easier, but we made a uh, couple of mistakes when we had like 12-8 or something, like three rounds in a row, we got entry after entry, but somehow they managed to win a round by sloppy mistakes by us. Um, of course, they played really good, uh, JDM as well, like you said. Uh, he hit his shots with the up and uh, he made it hard for us. Uh, similar, what about you? Any other opinions here on that first game between NIP and CLG? Uh, so I think uh, Exist pretty much hit the three rounds on the head where they were able to set up set up pretty much where you're thinking, okay, 100% they're going to hold this. And then what actually happened? Was it miscommunication? Was it jitters? What, what actually happened to miss those shots? Because at least two of those rounds where you're set up on A, it really seemed like there's no way they can lose this situation. Uh, I think it was the positioning and the uh, plants. Where we planted was the biggest mistake from us. Like how uh, the positions we took after Mm -hmm. off the plant. Um, and one of the rounds, I think I had a Tech-9 in pit, and uh, <laughs> it's not the best position. Yeah, <laughs> that was I was well. trying to wrap around short, but then I got the call that we planted towards long only. Yeah, so I had to stay there with the Tech-9. And uh, did you grin really hard when it was 13-13 and they tried to retake uh, on B? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> on that situation, we had really good positions, and uh, we ca I kind of knew that we should win this 80%, mm -hmm. 90%, so no, no, not really. <laughs> Right on. Well, I mean, as you guys were mentioning earlier, a win is a win, and eventually you're going to be moving on to the winner's match here. Uh, overall, how are you looking at this group of Group A? Were you guys worried at all coming into the groups? Were you like, you know what, it should be fine if we just play our A game? No, of course, coming into a major, you have to prepare for everyone. Everyone is so good nowadays. Uh, CLG is like a dark horse, I would say. We don't know that much about them because we don't play against them so much. Mm -hmm. And they recently beat TSM and Fnatic, I believe, in Gamescom. Um, and TSM has always been a top team, top four team, so they're really good as well. And uh, the fourth team, 
uh, the Australians. They're also like a dark horse. We don't know so much about them. So yeah, we have to prepare for everyone, 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's why a lot of the community, I think, has been rallying around this major saying, you really don't know. I mean, it's going to be a really exciting one. Now, uh, as you said, you thought maybe you should have won easier. But Henry, overall then, any other questions for Exist here uh, after their first game? Now that we've seen, uh, you know, after all the speculation. Just how one of the rounds that really stood out for me. Um, the third round going in, you guys were full eco. It was 2-0, you were down. And then you came back and did a full eco. Um, you won the round as well, like, oh, PC, PC fouls on your USPs. Like, did you, do you think that was a mistake from CLG going to that? Or was it something you guys orchestrated to actually get into the round? I think we got a entry on A, yeah. on C we were long, I don't remember. It's just, it's just then, a round you don't expect to win at all, right? Like no, it's almost no. a throwaway round in some, some respects. Yeah, not at all. We had a full eco and uh, I think Freiburg did a great job on B. Or maybe they made a mistake not pushing him earlier and trying to kill him earlier. But um, yeah, mistakes happen and... Uh, that's a major. It, it seemed like they didn't. They didn't want to. They were. They were too scared to face you. Almost. They were playing so passively and allowing you guys to even get the position on them. And then the crossfires ensued. It was like pandemonium going down. But that's one of the interesting rounds. I think CLG were looking back on when you you win the first two rounds quite convincingly, and then you lose the, the full eco against them is uh, right. always disappointing. So that's yeah, what not, to touch on. not a result you generally expect yeah. after the first two. But Flair, what about you? Any any new thoughts now that we've we've heard a lot coming into this major about every team, right? About well, how they're doing in scrims or whatnot. But now that we've seen one game from each team, maybe anything for NIP, or even just maybe questions that to exist about CLG now having played against them? Uh, no, not really. I mean, one thing to note about CLG is that they still seem to have issues closing out games. Mm. Yeah. As we saw in Gamescom, we saw that the first game now here as well. Yeah, they can play, but at the end of the day, even if you end up losing 16-14 to 14 or 16-1, to 1, for them it's still a loss on the paper. So, uh, But overall, I mean, it looked solid for NIP. Sure, it was probably a little bit closer than what they would have been expecting, but yeah, they're going to be matched up against TSM or, or Renegades in a, right. in a few hours. I think I've got an idea for a side business for Device, actually. Make a little money on the side at the event, you know, maybe <laughs> oh, get some counseling. Yeah. You know, how do you get over choking? Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and Device is going to set them down, right? He's going to be in a circle. He's like, listen, boys, you know, this is, this is what you got to do. Uh, but yeah. there is a little bit of that there, right? You get that feel where it's like, we've seen this before. Oh, mm. yeah. But look at what TSM did once they got over it, once they got over that. Right. Part. Yeah, I mean, it's something real, right? It's, whether it's an outside factor or whatnot, it's, it's going to mm -hmm. play some of these teams. Well, is this, once again, congratulations, but it's still going to be a long way if you guys want to get to where you want to be here uh, at the Major. Overall, though, now that one game's down, you guys feeling confident? As you said, I mean, a win is a win. You've got that uh, W on your scoreboard. Yeah, for sure. The first game is always hard to get a win. Uh, once you get over that bump, I think you just keep on rolling, you know? So well, it's good. Real quick, uh, who would you rather face between the remaining two in your group, TSM or Renegades? TSM for sure. For sure. Just because you don't have that element of surprise that's possible with Renegades where, like you said, you weren't too familiar with their play style? I think we just want to prove to everyone that we're a top team, that we can beat TSM, you know? I think that's what drives us right here. Damn straight. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all go. right. Well, it was nice having you on the desk after your first winning assist. Thank you very much for joining us. Also, for all of you guys at home, don't forget to check out the Score Esports. For all your information, you can download the app at the iOS App Store or the Google Play Store, and they've got a nice little piece rounding up the whole thing on everything you need to know at ESL One Cologne. So go ahead and check that. For now, though, we'll take a quick look, of course, at one of our favorites, Joe Miller in CSGO.